Hey there, it's Whitney Labrie. It's Dollhouse Project Day, so let's get started. Okay, so for this dollhouse, I am really inspired by a lot of the stonework that I saw when I traveled to Ireland. And so I really wanted to bring that element into this new design. I've never done stonework before, so I really didn't know how I wanted to go about it. But I will tell you that I know myself well enough that it would have to be something that was kind of quick and did not require a huge amount of patience because, you know, I don't have uh, much of that. <laughs> so anyway, I really wanted to do something quick so that I could really see uh, cool results very, very um, quickly. Um, so I just started by putting together like my, my skeleton of my dollhouse is where I wanted the stone. And in this case with the tower and the, the base, I want to do a chimney, which I, I build later in the series. And also the bay windows are all going to be covered in stone. I have worked with clay in the past. And so I wanted to, do, to really kind of experiment with this option. The tools that I used were uh, the clay, of course. I used DOS. I did, however, make a big, big mistake right off the bat. And that was I like, went right in and I grabbed the clay right off the shelf and I really wasn't paying attention. So um, I literally didn't realize that I got the wrong clay until I literally opened the package and boom. So anyway, I bought terracotta and it clearly shows the terracotta on the package, but whatever, I mean, I really, it just means that I had to do an additional step in this case. So if they are out of the other color gray and you have to buy terracotta, just know that you can do it. But anyway, here we are. So most of the tools I use are baking tools uh, since I used to bake a lot. And what I used was a, the dough rolling mat for like pie crust, a rolling pin, and um, I used some tools that I would typically use for fondant. So, uh, but you can use a butter knife or toothpicks and that sort of thing too. I also purchased a foam stone hand roller and I wasn't really sure how this was going to work if it was gonna do really well, but I absolutely love the results. I would definitely um, say to recommend this item um, and then I will put where I bought it from in the description below. Um, and the last tool and one of the most important tools that is a must for everything that I do is coffee. So uh, you can see my coffee in the photo and I definitely drink plenty of that. So uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I just roll out the clay and I just really make sure that it's really even, just like a pie crust. And then I place wood glue on my dollhouse skeleton wood pieces and I, peel up the clay and then I just lay it right on top of that skeleton and cut off the extra clay. And you really need to make sure that your skeleton and your wood pieces are really glued together well, otherwise the weight of the clay can actually, you know, um, break the part, break the piece apart. And so just know that anyway. And also to, um, as you're adhering the clay to that, know that you will put your fingerprints into it and your fingernails in some cases like with me and so you're gonna have to smooth out those pieces again before rolling that clay uh, that roller over the clay to make the stone so um, the other thing is is I made a big mistake and I rolled the clay back over like I went I missed a spot and then I tried to roll it backwards do not do this otherwise it's gonna give you like this double vision look um, and then you'll have to redo that spot. So in my case, I that area that I mis made the mistake in, I am gonna be covering with a roof line and so I didn't go back, but honestly, I was just really being lazy and I should have done it. And I recommend that you go ahead and you do that too. So once I put the clay onto those skeleton pieces, the wood pieces, I go back and then I put them in the right slots where those pieces are going to go because the last thing I need is for this clay to dry in an awkward position where the piece no longer fits or adheres to where it's supposed to go on the dollhouse. So when you see these photos, know that some of this clay is still wet, but I've slid, I slid them back into where they go so when it dries, it'll dry correctly and it'll be able to connect to the next pieces that I put on the dollhouse. Um, so the original fireplace that comes with the dollhouse kit is supposed to go next to the staircase to the interior of the dollhouse, but I'm moving this. I'm moving the fireplace to the outside wall and because I really wanted to build a big stone chimney. So you can see here that um, I've moved that and the chimney that I'm making, what I did was I bought three 
pieces of balsa wood, 36 inches. I measured out where the chimney would actually meet the roof line and then I cut out each piece and glued them together. I had to do it this way because I don't have the tools to really make cuts for really thick wood. So I chose to do smaller piece, thinner pleat pieces I should say. And then I just glued them all together to get the thickness that I wanted. And then I covered that in the clay and then did that faux stone over it. One of the things I did was I left the little top part of the chimney to the side and I'm not gonna work on that right now and the reason is because once the roof goes on I'm probably gonna have to change the the base the angles are probably gonna need to be widened so I really don't want to mess without a pert stone on it until the time comes and uh, the right time comes for that so we're just gonna keep that to the side for now until later on now for the fun part, which is the painting part. So it took my clay about a half a day to dry. You could wait longer depending on the type of clay that you use and also the wood glue that you use. The first coat that we're gonna do, the base coat is gray sky. So for the terracotta portion, I did have to do two coats. For the gray side, I only had to do one coat. And then after that, you will let that dry and do the darker gray, which I use gray sky. Once that's dry, you can put on the black coat, which is a special application, which I'll show in a second. Then you're gonna sponge paint on the milk chocolate brown, sponge paint on a little bit more dark gray, and then sponge paint on the latte. Now, the application for the black paint, you're just gonna dip your brush into a nice amount of black paint, and then you're gonna dip it right into the water. Don't worry about runoff, and then you're just gonna smush that paintbrush right into the surface and let all that black paint just run through the grooves, and then wipe off any excess, and you repeat that over and over until you get the look that you want. And it should not look even. The black should not be even, because we're going with a look of older stone, so we want it to be a little uneven, like as though it has been weathered and has washed away over time and some of the grout is gone and there's been dirt build up and so on in okay, case so it looks real. And then, and then after that, you pretty much have your finished look here as you're seeing here in the photos. And you can just leave it like that if you want. But for me, I'm gonna be adding some other details as I begin to add landscaping to the yard and in things like moss and water build up and grout textures and other details, I will add based on you know, where I wind up putting plants and other elements that I'll be adding later. But for now, this is complete and it's on its way to be freaking awesome. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for sure. Please subscribe, please like, and please comment below. And we'll see you soon. Bye!